Harley, are you there? Can you can you hear me? Hi, I'm here. I'm oh, so excited. I can hear you. Hey, I'm Matt streaming to you as always from Brooklyn. Oh man, Harley, great to have you on the stream. Thank you so much for finding a little bit of time to do this. I super, super appreciate it. It's awesome. Um, you've been a friend of the stream for a while. Your stream's great. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for coming on. So mm -hmm. thank you for having me. Yeah, of course, of course. So definitely, definitely tell me. Um, I, I know what you stream, but you tell us, you know, you tell us. What do you stream? Animal Crossing. <laughs> Just a ton <laughs> of Animal Crossing. And then Bly and, and I, who are both here, yeah, we uh, we hang. <laughs> and it's good. So how long uh, how long have you been streaming for at this point? Um, well, I started with COD. I didn't start with Animal Crossing. Wait, what did you start with? COD. Call of Duty. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're, right. yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, which I, which I saw. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, fun. so I did that, and then I switched to Animal Crossing. So I guess it's been a few months now. Not very long. Yeah, but a few months. Yeah, it's cool. That's fun. Ton of fun. So are you going to do a, do you think you're going to go back at some point to shooters, or do you think you're going to keep it kind of like, kind of relaxed now with the Animal Crossing stuff? I kind of want to go back to shooters. <laughs> a little, uh, a little thirsty for a little, for a little action. <laughs> yeah. Animal Crossing is just really relaxing. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. That's cool. So yeah. So definitely if anybody gets a chance, definitely check out uh Harl stream. So good. So uh, a while back over the last couple of weeks, we've all been talking and you were mentioning that you were going to see in the Heights and that you were a fan of um, musicals and whatnot. And so I was like, oh, that's interesting. That's cool. And then unexpectedly, I wasn't, I didn't really know that it was going to happen, but I ended up um, seeing, uh, seeing in the Heights myself, friends of mine, uh, friends of a friend is what I should really say. Friends of a friend. Uh, ended up projecting it on like the side of a building somewhere. I won't get too specific because I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But you know, they were uh, they threw it up on a building and we we all watched together. And it was a very cool time. So it was neat. Uh, when did you last see it? Um, it was actually like a week ago. Cool. Uh, so that's about the same for me. So that's good. Yeah. So we're kind of coming at it the same way. So that's awesome. Um, and you, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you've got like a background in like the arts, right? You've got some performing arts experience. I do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tell us about that. So I write music. Um, I sing, I was in musicals in high school and I was on the dance team. So oh, that's cool. So yeah. So, so basically everything going on with the, in the Heights is like stuff that like you do and you're like involved in. So pretty much. Yeah, that's cool. In my case, I don't have that kind of a background, but I was lucky enough that I actually, um, I got to see it per chance on Broadway. So that's kind of an interesting way for me to kind of come at it, you know, because I got to see the, uh, the play. So you didn't get, you didn't get a chance to see the play, did you? No, I only seen the movie. Okay. So we've each got our little, little angles for this, uh, for this discussion. So that's cool. And I, I haven't seen Hamilton. Did you catch that? I did. I love uh, Hamilton. You love it? Yeah. <laughs> I always hear so everyone's great. like, oh my gosh, the best. And so, you know, it's interesting to talk about in the Heights because people seem to like, like it, but not love it quite the same way. But yeah, it's very different concepts. Yeah, totally. I've been told that the soundtracks sound pretty, pretty similar though. Right. I didn't think so. Oh, really? That's interesting. Cause that's, that's what I've heard from a few different people. So it's kind of cool that you did not think that. So, huh, that's neat. So like, what do you think, like, how do they sound different to you? I think um, the biggest difference was Hamilton is more verbal, like mm -hmm. not really rapping, but it's more like spoken lyrics. We're mm -hmm. in the Heights, like that was there, but there was also like, singing involved per se gotcha oh that's neat that's interesting yeah and i you know i forgot to ask but i definitely want to check how uh, how did you how did you watch it i just watched it on hbo in my room cool it was totally. something special yeah which i think honestly i think that's how most people have watched it at this point mm -hmm. you know for sure 
that's cool. So when you watched it, I don't know, I, I, I don't know. Was there like, first off in general, did you dig it or not? Like, were, like, were you into it? Were you not into it? What, what did you think in general? Um, well, at first I was like, this is not what I expected. Oh, really? I'm th yeah, I was thinking like Hamilton, completely musical, just so far out there. And it, that's not what I got, but I enjoyed it. It wasn't awful. It's just not what I expected <laughs> it, wasn't it to awful. be. <laughs> That's cool. That's so interesting because I, you know, having seen, having seen the play in my head, I was kind of a little bit sort of expecting this, but that's mm -hmm. an interesting thing. I wonder if other people, I bet other people had that same experience because so many people just like you saw Hamilton first and they were probably like, oh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's super interesting. Um, in my case, I thought it made a better movie than a play. So even though it's not really my jam and not what I would normally watch, I thought it was pretty cool. I, uh. You know, I dug it, um, even though it's not necessarily like what I'm into per se. Now, to explain, actually, I did not like the play so much. And the reason I didn't really like the play was because the play, um, if you even see just the just the movie, it. Um, how should I explain? It's like an anthology of stories. And in the play, I felt like there wasn't enough extra info for the uh, for the play to sort of like explain itself. But in the movie, they were able to work in sort of extra info so like the stories could breathe a little more and you got a little more into it. So that was like an interesting little like compare and contrast. So I definitely dug the movie better and sort of generally, generally dug it. Thought it was pretty good. So, so yeah. Oh. Um, did you like the soundtrack in general, even though it was not what you were expecting? Yeah, I did. I think I liked the soundtrack more than Hamilton. It was just oh wow, not oh, cool. what I expected. Yeah, just surprises. Yeah, <laughs> but it was a good surprise. Oh, that's that's awesome. In a way. Yeah, yeah, and and again, I think totally probably you probably have like a lot of the standard experience, you know. Mm hmm. I think sometimes people who like write about it and like who are really involved in like media, they're more likely to have seen it as a play, but like regular person out there, they totally did not, <laughs> you know, like across the country. Right. Yeah. So that's neat. Did you have a favorite section? Um, of the movie... Or anything think, that you either liked or didn't like, or, you know, any section that moved you particularly, any portion of it. So the part that moved me the most, and I think this is just, like, where my heart and my personality comes into play, mm -hmm. is towards the end when Sunny and Nina were at the Dreamers rally. Oh, yeah, yeah, was totally. Talking, and yeah. she was saying, like, oh, my niece wasn't allowed to well this is like a spoiler for anyone who hasn't seen it but she was saying that that's okay at this point if they see us talking you know don't sweat yeah. it we're, we're talking in the heights they should uh they they, they should know <laughs> it's spoilers <laughs> so she was talking and she was like oh my niece can't go to school because she's like an immigrant and then i don't think sunny like really realized like oh, i'm not gonna have this opportunity to like further my education and they just all thought because nina did it that like he would be able to do it too mm -hmm. and so when he realized like oh i can't do that it just like broke my heart and like the whole Aww. shift in character development of nina like in that moment of time it just that was what moved me the most yeah and there was a you know that's also a little bit of like what i was kind of getting at with the difference between the play and the movie like there were spots mm -hmm. exactly like that where you could have that cool like character development and like you know, things kind of evolve in ways that the play you didn't get, so it made it deeper. It looks like Bly's on the same page with us, too. So that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, I for me, and this is to go in a very different direction. Now, actually, before I, before I say, uh, I'll just point out, uh, I, the people that, a couple of people that I watched with thought the same thing. That the, uh, that, the, that, the, that, the, that the younger kid at the Dreamers rally, and I apologize, I forget, I forget his name off the top of my head, um, that he was the Sunny. character that a few of the people that I watched with felt that they uh, connected with the most, you know? Mm -hmm. So definitely for sure. 
But for me, you know, I don't know, the, the one that really caught me and kind of like hit me and I was like, oh wow, this is pretty cool, was the pool scene. I, I loved the pool scene and the, um, uh, the Lotto song. And you know, in my head, it's like two things that were sort of mashed up that I wouldn't have necessarily known and gone together. And just so, so to sort of see all that like kind of mash up and be a humongous production involving all these people and water and like all these different ideas and like high energy, that for me was like my kind of like favorite spot. I don't know. <laughs> that was my favorite choreographed scene, like dance scene. Mm -hmm. That was my favorite. Oh, that's interesting. So you like that even better than maybe like the um, the club scene or um, yeah, so gotcha. much better. Interesting, or 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 also better. You know, not being a dance expert, I will say I did think it was a little bit cool. Also, the spot where they were dancing in the subway cars in um in the mind of uh, the grandmother. Yeah, that was cool too. Yeah. Yeah. So that was fun. And also, you know, being on set sometimes, like the idea of like filming, like in like pools like that to me is like, um, just like so difficult, so hard, so involved. And it's like crazy, you know? So, it is. so both those scenes were super cool. Oh, probably will be cool. Oh, yeah, Bly, right? So Bly says here, and I have to make sure to mention it because, uh, as I mentioned, my my fancy new little um, widget for uh, <laughs> for putting the chat on the screen is not quite working today yet, but that's okay. It's a new overlay. But Bly says, for anyone who can't see it because they may watch this some other time, I think they really worked on the production of the movie. It's so sick, and she's so right. The production... Just, they clearly put so much time into it, so much money, huge numbers of people dancing. And, you know, a lot of those people can't just be regular actors. A lot of them have to be dancers. And it was like, it was intense and it was kind of crazy. So, so yeah, so it was good stuff. Was there, uh, was there, uh, Harles, was there any, uh, any section, like any character or any section that you thought kind of could have been a little bit better that you thought was a little lacking? Um, I think, okay, character-wise, and mm -hmm. a lot of people are not going to like me for this, but I didn't <laughs> like Nina's character. Hot, yeah, put out the hot takes, drop drop some, <laughs> some, some spicy opinions. So, so she, um, to me, like at first, <laughs> since we didn't know her full story, and that was more towards the end, I felt like her character was very misrepresented, like during the movie. And it just came off as her being spoiled or like bratty and mm -hmm. ungrateful. But mm -hmm. then like her character development at the end of the movie was great. And I like liked her in character, mm -hmm. but I didn't like her at all at first. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. And just to confirm, Nina is uh, the girl who's visiting home from Stanford, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. I could understand that, you know? And also the way that they sort of built her up into this bigger-than-life character coming home mm -hmm. that everyone knew, to me, made her a little bit less human to me. Like, a little yeah. less real, you know? She becomes a little more real later. Right. For me, the and this this is the same thing that happened to me in the play. Oh, <laughs> Bly's like, she's kind of annoying. <laughs> 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 right? So for me, the one that um, that I thought could have been improved, and I don't know, it's it's interesting. Like I don't know if subconsciously I have this opinion where I looked at maybe, and and this is a, a little bit of a failing on my part. Maybe I kind of wonder if I gravitated towards the uh, one of the guy characters because I don't know being a dude or not, which shouldn't be the case. But sometimes subconsciously you do that a little bit. But uh, but the one that I always kind of was like perplexed me in both play and movie was. Benny, and the reason why I got a little perplexed by Benny was because I felt that the story for Benny never properly really wraps up or is explained. Because the way it looks to me is that at the end, Benny's about to lose his job and not know what he's going to be doing, and that's rough, you know? Benny was, like, working his heart out as a dispatcher at um, the cab company. And now right. the cab company is going to disappear and Benny's going to be without a job and he's not happy about it. 
uh, but you never hear what Benny's off to do again. And I guess we don't have to know what Benny's going to do, but I don't know. I kind of feel like Benny got like a little bit of a raw deal in the story, but then you never get a little bit more resolution. Maybe that's a little more real. I don't know. You get a little bit, and, and, and I don't think that Benny... I could be wrong about this, but in the play, I don't think that they have that last scene where um, Benny and uh, and Nina um, are like, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna still see each other. I'm gonna come visit." I think uh, I don't think they have that, and you're sort of left real up in the air, like how that's gonna go. So I kind of always thought that Benny was left with a very unfinished story. So that one always kind of got me. What did you think um, in general? Like, were you you were happy with the choreography and all the dance? Like, with your dance background, like you thought it was cool. Yeah, some of the stuff they were doing was very difficult, and like the scenes and the set. And I was like, "How are they doing that?" I was <laughs> very happy with the choreography. Yeah, was there was there was there one spot in particular? Like, I don't know if it was the pool scene because I mentioned. You know, you mentioned that earlier, but what was uh, what really got you? Where you were like, "Oh my god, how do you make this work?" It was the pool scene. Yeah, right. It was that really scene, cool. nuts. That scene. Yeah. There was also the scene where. I mean, I know this isn't real, but where like the building was moving, and it was Nina and oh yeah, yeah, at the end. His name. Yeah, and that was like the one scene I didn't like of the movie, just because it was so unreal, and the rest of it was realistic. Uh huh. But I liked how, as the building was moving and they were like dancing, it matched whatever was happening in the building. Oh yeah, yeah, so yeah. That was kind of Super cool too. Cool super cool have you uh as a kid did you ever think about like walking on the side of a, a building oh totally right right you always do <laughs> and i'll tell you over here especially with these buildings where i'm at um over here in brooklyn it's like you know you got all these fire escapes and it's like you think about it all the time you're like oh how cool yeah. would that be to be like spider-man <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that that was a, a neat scene um yeah even if it did kind of take you out of it a little bit so mm -hmm. It's cool. I'll tell you, also being from over here in New York, one of the things that I really dug um, was, to me, some of the realist feeling scenes were when they would shoot them particularly early in proximity to the subway entrance. And I don't know if this is just me, but like when you see the sub, the real subway entrance on the street in like the scene, it kind of clicks a thing in my head where I'm like, oh, that's actually New York. Like, that's really what it looks like. So I was kind of into that and kind of dug that. I thought it was cool. Bly has a doubt about whether it exists. Bly, let me tell you, it absolutely exists. It, it is definitely very much like that for sure. It is It is a real thing. Totally. Yeah. So I don't know if, uh, Harles, I don't know if you're like kind of a New York fan or if you've been here before, but like, I don't know, did you have any interesting, like, did you have any thoughts about New York? Like, I don't know, like, are you, are you someone who's trying to be in New York or like, what's, like, how did you feel watching it from somewhere else in the country? And also if you can let us know what region you're in, um, I think I know, but I'll leave it up to you. You don't, you don't have to get too specific if you don't want, but you know. Yeah, I'm um, from Georgia, from Metro Atlanta area. But um, I have been to New York. It's mm -hmm. been a few years, but I did go for a week for a dance competition. So um, we didn't go on the subways or anything, but just like driving around and seeing, like you said, the subway entrances and mm -hmm. like that kind of stuff, it mm -hmm. did bring back memories. But it wasn't like New York City. Like when you think of that, that's not right. That's what not I, what you were thinking of because yeah. of, uh, yeah. When you come here and you visit, you might be in sort of like more midtown or a little downtown. Right. Yeah, hundred percent. So it's interesting. So I so I wonder, and also just like Bly is saying here, where she's like, "Is it even real?" You know, mm -hmm. it's interesting. I think maybe it might hit a little bit more for some of us who have lived here in more residential areas of the city. So because it definitely felt pretty real to me, I was like, "But it, but if you're not, you know, like and you've only visited, you probably haven't been in those spots." So uh, right. so it doesn't. Um, so I'll tell you one thing that was missing, and this is going to be the silliest, stupidest thing that I'm going to tell you guys about that was kind of missing, was there have been some articles about this, and if anyone who lives in New York, they know about it. But in New York, there are these things called nutcrackers, and I did not see a single nutcracker anywhere in that movie. And uh, 
Oh, no worries, Bly. Thanks so much for stopping and listening to us, Bly. I really appreciate it. It's awesome. We'll catch you soon. We'll catch you in one of our streams for sure. Have a good dinner. So, uh, so one of the things that we have here, these things called nutcrackers. And what nutcrackers are, they're these long plastic containers with like cheap, like just like juice. And then there's a very specific, very special formula of alcohol that people take and it gets mixed and they get put together. And then all over like residential neighborhoods in the summer, people walk around and will just sell you nutcrackers out of um, giant, um, giant coolers. And uh, you know, wow. it'll be like oh, a couple bucks. And so it's basically these like bootleg, like alcoholic beverages that everyone just buys and everyone's just like, yeah, sure. And it's funny because if someone else is walking around and gonna offer you just like on the street, like some rando cocktail out of like an unmarked container and be like, here you go. <laughs> You'd probably be like, no, but like here everyone's like, oh yeah, nutcrackers. And so a few years back, there were a couple big news stories because it sound, it apparently hidden not, you know, people know about it, but not exactly where. In Washington Heights is like the epicenter of the Nutcracker factory. And apparently it's not like everyone's making Nutcrackers. It's like a Washington Heights thing. And just knowing that it was like summer in the city and like Washington Heights in my head, I was like, where are some Nutcracker dealers? Because it's like, that's like, that's like summer here to me. So I don't know. It was just like a silly, stupid thing, but I kind of wished I'd seen it, but that's okay. So did you see the clip after credits? Uh, you know what? I don't know if I did. I don't think I did. What was the clip? Okay, so it's um Man Miranda, and he's uh -huh. like selling snow cones, but he's pouring alcohol in the snow cones. Oh yeah, that's so pretty. That could be like <laughs> what you're talking about, but it wasn't like in the movie. It was like an after credit type of thing. Oh man, that sounds delicious, right? Little uh little snow cone cocktail. Oh, it sounds so right. good. Now, I'm not going to get too specific, but I might have worked at a job where there may have been some sort of, um, what's, uh, how should I phrase this? Some sort of like iced, um, iced coffee frothy mixture at a large, um, large corporate establishment, um, one time. And we might have made some cocktails that way and they might have been absolutely delicious out of the blenders. <laughs> and they that were so good. good yeah i'm sure no one can guess what that was but yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah um so neat yeah good stuff let's see what else what else we got over here oh yeah it's a good i don't know if you if you caught this or have any thoughts but um i'll just mention that i thought it was interesting i know um miranda had to apologize at one point um afterwards for lack of Afro-Latin uh, representation. And so I was kind of curious, like when I was watching, I was like, oh, was that gonna be apparent to me? And actually I was like, oh, wow, you know what? This is pretty apparent to me. You know, the only person to me who I was like, was like, oh, is really like singing, who's like a black dude here was Benny. And Benny is not really, didn't appear to me to be from like the Latin community. So, uh, so yeah, I can understand where people were coming from. So it's interesting. But um, I'm glad he apologized. I thought it was a good apology. He seemed very genuine and he's going to try and do better down the road. So, so that was a thing. Also curious to see uh, what happens with the financial stuff. And I don't know if you've been following this or not, but there were some concerns that it was like, oh, did it have a little bit of a flop first weekend? But yeah. like, I feel like no one knows what the hell is going on right now. It's the end of COVID. You know what I mean? Like who's in movie theaters? Who's watching at home? And you know everyone I mean? has HBO, so totally. like, why not, why pay to go see it in theater when you already have it, so. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally, and I feel like the movie theaters now are starting to creep back up with their prices closer to normal again, so mm -hmm. all the more. I, when I went to see uh, Scott Pilgrim, um, they were desperate to have people come in. And I got Saturday night tickets for like, I think like eight bucks each. It was like cheap as can be, but that's not what's going on over here anymore. It's like definitely higher. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I think you're totally right. But I feel like it's going to go on forever, right? People are just going to keep watching this for like a couple decades. I don't know. What mm -hmm. do you think? I think so. Yeah, right. But I think, so I was having this conversation with someone else, but yeah. I think it was supposed to do like really well, which I still think it did well, but not as well as it could have. Uh -huh. 
But I also think you have to be someone who's interested in musicals. Because if you hear like, oh, a musical, like you think of Hamilton, that's Mm -hmm. completely music. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of people didn't like that. So then you say like, oh, in the Heights, it's the same person. I'm not going to watch that. So you have to be someone who's like really into this kind of stuff to be like, oh, yeah, I want to see that. Mm -hmm. Or a New Yorker file, you know, from somewhere where you're like, oh, I really, you know, so. Yeah, totally. I feel you on that one. So maybe maybe not quite as much broad appeal, but fingers right. crossed. Fingers crossed it does well long term. I think it will. I think it'll be around, hanging around for a while. People keep watching it, so. So we'll, you know, we'll see. Did you have anything, like, any other, like, you know, thoughts, anything else that you, know, that you wanted to throw out, or any final thoughts on kind of the movie that you might want to mention? I don't think so. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I think we covered just about everything, you know? Like, we kind of got into, like, what was good, what wasn't, favorite characters. Yeah, I think we covered just about all of it. All in all, though, you know, I think it was pretty cool. I think it was a good job. I'm very curious to see where he goes artistically down the road. Um, because I've heard some people who tell me that they like Hamilton. It makes me wonder if he is working better with an established, pre-existing plot to then tack on to sort of his like motifs and styles and musical abilities mm-hmm. as opposed to like building a whole story up from the ground up, you know, which was a little more challenging and more what he did in, in the Heights. So I'm definitely curious to see down the road if he pairs with another historical story or if he really starts like all from nothing again. So I don't know. We'll see. It'll be a cool thing to go check out for sure. Like, you know, like what, what his next moves are. I don't know. Great. Uh, are you, uh, so now that like, we're kind of like out of COVID and like, we're all trying to like do our thing and like get back a little bit to normal and like, um, you know, stuff's open again. Is there anything like on the horizon that you're really looking forward to seeing and, 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 and what are you, how are you thinking that you're going to watch it? Whatever it is that you might be looking forward to watching. Um, so really it's not new, but Mm -hmm. like why I said earlier, dear Evan Hansen, Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited about that, but that's also another musical Mm -hmm. so i don't really have anything that i'm like dying to go see so i don't know and i'm still i'm still that person that's still kind of like oh covid still exists we need to be careful so i'm it that's just me but i'm still kind of hesitant on going places like that right now oh 100 percent makes total sense yeah it is still around it is still a little tricky um in my case Having been vaccinated, getting the two shots, I'm feeling pretty good to go into theaters for me. Um, and I definitely mm-hmm. understand that a lot of people are not, and that totally, that makes a ton of sense. I get it. Uh, I think I'm probably going to go to theaters again soon, and I think that what I'm going to go see is the thing that I'm excited for. And don't tease me because it's so, I don't want to say lowbrow, it's not lowbrow, <laughs> but um, so basic. But uh, I don't know. I'm excited for Black Widow. I want to go watch some Marvel stuff. Yeah. I want to go see a Marvel movie again. I think it's going to be fun. <laughs> so, so super excited for that. So, so we'll see. Should be good stuff. Excited to go back to the theaters. Excited to watch some Black Widow. It'll be cool. So, just before we kind of wrap up, um, so you said you're going to do a little bit more maybe shooters in the future, maybe also some Animal Crossing. Do you, uh, do you have a sense of when you might be streaming again? If not, no worries. I know it could be a little, like, impromptu. But um, but if you know, definitely let us know. Um, well, tomorrow, oh, I was cool. just planning on doing, like, a chill day. Uh-huh. Like, just talking, play uh-huh. some music, that kind of thing. Not really play games, because there's just, like, I have so many ideas in my head, and I just have to get them organized. Oh, man. But, yeah, just step by step, you know, little by little, just a new one each week. Totally. Right. You can do it. But I do just want to like get on and just like chill, just chat, hang yeah. out. So hundred percent. That's going to be awesome. And, and again, you don't need to like box yourself in. So if you don't want to say no worries, but do you have a sense of what time you're going to be on? Um, it will probably be around three. Okay. So there you go. So, yeah, so if everyone's bopping around watching this and kind of digging it right now, it's six twenty nine, and, uh, you're talking three o'clock Eastern time, right? Yes. Yeah. So if anybody catches this either today or later, just know Harl's Nugs is going to be on tomorrow at three o'clock. And right there on screen is the, uh, is the, uh, the URL, the Twitch, uh, the Twitch info to get there. 
So, so yeah, so good stuff. So this was a ton of fun. Thank you so much for coming on stream and chit chat oh, with me. I really for appreciate it. Me. Yeah, absolutely. You've been a friend of the stream. Definitely looking forward to having you back on. I, uh, I'm starting to get to a spot now with the stream where I'm trying to have on various friends of the stream, kind of like one or two a week. So, so I think that'll be fun. Will be great to have you back on at some point. On Thursday, I'm going to have my buddy, um, I believe my buddy Imran will be on stream with me. I have to reach back out to him um, to see. And I think he's going to come on at four kind of in this block. And what I think we're going to do, for, uh, did I say Friday? I meant to say Thursday. Excuse me. Thursday. I think Thursday he might be coming on stream with me at four. Um, so I'm going to be doing some more blocks like this and it'll be cool. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, I've been doing a thing called dumb craigslist antiquing where i go into craigs and we laugh at the silly things that are on sale and we always kind of wrap up taking a look at like the misconnections and just kind of laughing about that so i think he'll be on with me probably and we'll uh we'll laugh about that and if he's not able to make it no worries i'll do it on my own but um but i think he's gonna come on so it'll be cool so it'll be good stuff but yeah but thank you so much for coming on being my first real little interview guest here was super cool and awesome and uh yeah good stuff so harley everybody thank you so much thank you Yep, cool. I'll catch you soon, Harls. Bye. Cool.